So guys, we have Chris Ray on today. Super excited to have him on. Like I said, third time's a charm. Chris Ray resides in Southern California and has worked to be one of the most respected filmmakers in the skateboarding industry. His love for filming started with skateboarding, but has now continued to grow as he expands his experience into the rest of the film industry. So he has done a wide range of work with companies like DC Shoes, we'll talk a lot about that, NFL Films, Ford, GoPro, ESPN, and many more. His film reel is diverse with action sports, lifestyle, music videos, commercials, and everything in between, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and check out this recent reel he did for Core, uh, and we will get going with Chris here in a second. We're driven. Chris Ray on right now. We're just sitting here waiting for Chris. We will, he will hop on. What's up, Chris? How are you, man? What's up? How's it going? It's working. I'm excited. <laughs> Pumped. Third time is the charm. We're going to get that's, this to work today. That's right. Uh, I just saw a comment. It said, whoa, bad quality. Uh, that must have been uh, the service that that you're being provided right now. It looks good on my end. Hopefully you guys can see the next couple of videos that we're going to play. Chris, how are you, man? What's going Doing on? Good. Doing good, man. Doing good. Awesome. What's up your way today? Uh, today, actually, we have a shoot um, tonight for DC Shoes uh, down in San Diego. So I've just been prepping gear for that and uh, getting ready for, for all that. And then uh, a lot of editing has been going on. So we've been releasing the uh, latest skate video from DC called Domino, which has been coming out every week on Thrasher. Yep. So uh, I just sent off the last edit um, last night. So that will be a complete of five-week launch that we did. And all the videos are now on Thrasher and on YouTube. That's exciting, man. That's exciting. I want to backtrack from now, though. Mm -hmm. And there might be some people on here that might not be familiar with your work. Hopefully that gave them a nice introduction if they could see it. Uh, let's just start, you know, this whole thing. How did it begin for you, Chris? I know we talked a little bit about Fully Flared last time. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll get into that as well. But can you just take us back to when you first picked up the camera and you were like, this is what I want to do? Yeah, I mean, I, I was always into skateboarding. Uh, I was obsessed with it. And, you know, I believe it was in like sixth grade. I had a, a group of friends come to me and say, we're going to make our own skate video. Do you want to be in it? And my mind was blown. I never even thought about making our own video and being the stars in it. Um, I just, I was so excited. And then uh, from there, I just, it kind of never really took off, you know, uh, that my friends didn't make the video. Um, I was the one that was very obsessed with it. And, and so I was like, you know what? I'll grab the camera. I want to make this video. I'm going to research how we, how we find a place to edit this or how we do it VCR to VCR. And um, I just kind of just became the filmer naturally that way, not knowing that you could do it for a job or anything. Yeah, you were like, oh, okay, I'm going to skate as long as it lasts and keep skating with the homies. And then, but I'm, I'm, it seems like I'm the one that's taking the whole camera thing seriously. That kind of happened with me in the snowboard world too. It just seems like, uh, priorities as you get older start to get shifted and you realize, uh, you know, what can last long term, right? So, and clearly it's worked out for you. So that kind of happened. And then you moved into, I'm not sure on the years, but then Fully Flared came out. I think, was that 07? Yeah, Fully Flared came out in 07. And yeah. uh, right before 06, um, you know, I had been working with Brandon Beeble and Ty Evans and stuff. When, when they'd come to Sacramento or, or Reno, where I was living at the time, um, I would show them around. And so I started to build these relationships with people and I didn't, I didn't, there was no other filmers where I lived. So I was kind of learning everything on my own. There wasn't uh, YouTube, there wasn't, you know, uh, where you can reach out to people and get tutorials, which is right. crazy to think back on. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy that kids like today won't, won't, won't realize that 
you know, I mean, I, I've installed a light on my porch and YouTube how to do it, you know? So yep. it's just, it's crazy that, that that didn't exist for us when we were kids and we're not even that old. So, um, yeah. you know, those, those guys came to town. I think Ty saw the passion that I had for filming and, and, and he saw that I was obsessed with it and he really took me under his wing and, and, uh, you know, gave me my first job on the most anticipated skate video, um, ever made. So it was a, it was a dream come true. Yeah, I was jaw dropped when that thing came out. I remember watching mm -hmm. it when I was younger, just being like, what is skateboarding now? You know what I mean? Yeah. It, like, it kind of changed the whole the whole sport as a whole and the way that people look at video parts. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, it kind of put an interest into more video parts. And then later down the road, then we would finally get Real Street introduced into X Games, both for snowboarding, yeah. skiing and skating. And we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. Mm -hmm. But clearly like a revolutional time for the skateboard industry and your career. So... Fast forward to today a little bit. You kind of told us what you were go what was going on today, but what's a kind of a standard working day look like for you, Chris? I mean, do you guys get up early and go hit a spot? Do you have to always fix uh, concrete? Do you have to fix places? Yeah. Is it just what's the process look like for you well, on a you day to day know, basis? It, it's funny because over the last you know ten plus years I've been doing it, it's changed a lot. Where you know I used to wake up, you know, go skating, go looking for spots, fix spots, find spots, um, film skateboarding every day, but. Nowadays, I mean, it's it's my role has changed. My responsibilities have changed. Um, you know, I've got a family I'm taking care of. But, you know, I, I definitely I'm obsessed with work. I'm always trying to get up and get going. Um, but, you know, I'm involved a lot with like DC marketing. I'm in a lot of meetings. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm helping oversee projects. I'm, I'm helping uh, storyboard projects. Uh, so it's every day is different. But every day there's something to do and there's a deadline. So I, I love it though. I mean, like I couldn't be a freelance person. I don't think because I would hate to wake up on a Tuesday and have nothing to do. You know, like I just, right. I'm the kind of person that, that freaks out if I have nothing to do, but I wish I could like relax and chill more, especially with having a family, but I just haven't, haven't figured it out. It's just when you work in something that's so exciting, yeah. um, you just don't want to stop, you know, Absolutely. So, but each day, each day is different, man. I mean, it's like some days, if the it depends on the project if we're filming if it's like we need to film we'll film for like two weeks straight and mm -hmm. then we'll start the editing process or we'll start you know figuring out the next one but every day is definitely a project yeah i mean it's hard to get away from something that's exciting and i mean we do what we love and we're super lucky to to be able to do that you know do that for a living and you're right it is kind of hard to to get away from that and steer clear of that mm -hmm. plus it's always changing right so you're always trying to stay and evolve with the technology and the mm -hmm. skaters and things like that so let me ask you this you your client list was huge but are you a so you wouldn't consider yourself a freelancer are you full time with DC then yeah i'm full time okay. i've been with them That's for uh, almost 10 years and uh cool. you know they've been really supportive of when other projects come about um like the NFL stuff or things that i'm really passionate about that i want to do um, you know, yeah. I'm not I'm not taking freelance jobs that are uh, similar to what I, I do for them because I don't I don't need to do that. You know, most of the time I'm doing this because I want to get the experience and I want to bring it back to D.C. Um, I sure. want to I want to make the connections. Um, and also one day it's like, you know, I want to I want to have knowledge of how to film all that other stuff. So, yeah, for sure. You don't want to limit yourself or get too yeah. niched in or too cornered into the industry, which I, I do understand that. But it sounds mm -hmm. like D.C. has taken really good care of you. Um, but it also looks like you work with a lot of other brands and I know these are more like ambassador types things and mm -hmm. us as creatives, that's what we, you know, really like as long mm -hmm. as the, we back the product, right. It, you know, we don't just choose a, a lighting company or like Lytra or, totally. you know, small HD, you have to love the, the product and it has to work for you. Uh, how did you get involved with so many different brands? I, and if you, you could list some of those out, you can totally, feel yeah, free to I mean, drop. you know, I, I've been, I've been super fortunate. I'm working with the the brands that i want to work with you know there's definitely nobody on the list of that i'm working with or gear that i'm using that that uh that i don't believe in that's one thing that i think is true i think that nowadays on social media um especially people can kind of see uh through all all the crap you know i think that they can tell um when it's fake and when it's an ad and so on but yeah. you know everything i'm using a lot of it a lot of it kind of came together because i was already using the products i believed yeah. in it i was using it um, and I was promoting it. And I think the companies saw that like small HD, wooden camera core, um, you guys, you know what I mean? Like GoPro, like it's all, it all came together because it was real, you know? And, and I think that that's, what's important is that, that, uh, I truly believe in like all, all the stuff that I use and, and I'm a fan of it. And that's also, that's also why I don't slow down filming because I'm getting right. these new products. I'm being able to test things out and it's just so exciting, you know, to get like a, 
a new light or, or a new uh, monitor or a new camera and be able to go out on the weekend and find some cool stuff to shoot. Yeah, it opens up your portfolio. You get to test mm -hmm. these things before you, you know, buy them. Uh, yeah. If you if you hadn't already bought them before, mm -hmm. I think that's. I mean, that says a lot about um, where you're at in your career. That you have brands. You know, they might see a picture of you, a behind the scenes photo of you with a monitor, and they're like, "Oh, they already he already uses our monitor. Let's support him." I think that says a lot uh, first about you. It says a lot about the brand. Um, and that's something that you should definitely keep up because that's that's always a f fun yeah. phone call or a fun email when you're like, oh, the product's on its way. I, I love that feeling. Yeah, um, and it's, I enjoy shooting the, the product photography and shooting behind the scenes and, and just capturing what we're capturing and and showing people how we captured it. You know, I'm not a I'm not a jealous person. I'm not a competitive person. I get inspired by other filmmakers, and I want to. I hope that the stuff that I post and the stuff that I shoot inspires somebody else to go out and get something whether that's uh you know it just to get creative you know like i want to see people shoot rad stuff and i mean instagram's incredible you can go on there and see something and go that that just gave me an idea or like i can do that in skateboarding like i i love it yeah i totally agree and it's funny just as soon as you said that comment cvs skateboarding typed chris's gopro angles actually make people want to go to get one so i mean <laughs> job well it's done right <laughs> yeah, it's, working. It, it, it's working so i mean why do you think connections in this industry are so important then i mean obviously you have a lot of them i mean it's just it's important because uh you know it just it opens up more opportunities you know whether that's with with a company that has product um and i think we're at a we're at a cool time in our lives where we both come from a skateboarding action sports background and a lot of these companies do too you know you look at small yeah. hd and there's people there that skateboard and that's incredible so i think that you're seeing a lot of cool content out there and you're seeing it being supported because these people are a fan of it also so yeah um and and dude outside of companies like it's all about who you know you know like it's it's about being reliable it's about being dependable and 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 where people trust you but we you know i didn't go to film school you know like right. i didn't i'm not the best filmmaker in the world but i know a lot of people i've made a lot of connections and i and i've built the trust with people and and that's why that's why ty gave me my first job because you know i didn't know what shutter speed was i didn't know any of that stuff but he saw that i was i really was going to put forward the effort and um it just it happened yeah, I think, well, your talent speaks for itself, but then mm -hmm. I think those brands uh, really love that niche market where we just said, maybe don't get cornered into that. But mm -hmm. yeah, like you said, people love skateboarding, people love snowboarding. Like, and mm -hmm. if, if those unique opportunities present themselves and you're using that gear and they see that, why wouldn't you support that human being, you know? So um, I think I totally agree with you. It's all about who you know, and I've, I've slowly learned that in this industry. Uh, we had a question pop up as you were, you were speaking there. It says, who is one of your favorite film directors, Chris? It could be anyone. Who? Um, I mean, there's a lot of them. Obviously, I look up, look up to everything that Ty does. I mean, he's really pushed yeah. the boundaries. Um, and he, he made the skate videos early on when I was a kid of, of where that really opened my eyes, you know, like seeing the old trans world videos and seeing how, how well those were put together and, and how much thought went into the, the filming and the editing. Um, and then to later work for him and then to later work, go on and work for trans world. I mean, that just, if, if I didn't think that would even be possible in my life, you know, like that yeah. was a dream come true. Not very many people have gotten that, that job on that role. And, and I'm super yeah. lucky with that, but there's so many, you know, like I go, I go, um, the iron cloud dudes are incredible. Oh, yeah. Like you guys have to look up their stuff on Instagram and they're just, they're workhorses. You know, the content yeah. they put out is incredible. Um, there's, there's, a, there's so many out there. Yeah. And my crew, the crew, the crew that I work with, dude, like Martin, Sam, Clay and these dudes, like they're, they inspire me every day because they just, they, they push so hard. You know, I could call those guys and be like, Hey, I have an idea for a shoot we're going to do. And they just say, yeah, we're down before I can even finish. And like that, that inspires me. Very cool. So you're kind of over the whole like media department at DC is what would Martin's role be? Cause I know he takes a lot mm -hmm. of your behind the scenes stuff. I met Martin at NAB along with yeah. you. We had been in communication before mm -hmm. NAB, but uh, Martin was with you and we got to talk about, you know, Lytra and fun lights and stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, what's Martin's role uh, with you? So, so everybody's role is, is pretty much, I, I want to say the same, you know, I mean, my yeah. title might be like uh, on the top, but I definitely don't treat yeah. it like that because we have sure. such a, um, you know, self-sufficient crew that it's not needed to go in and, and like necessarily yell at people or tell them what they need to do. You know, yeah. we all work with each other. We treat each other equal. 
Um, and it's really just, you know, depending on when the project comes out, we, we, we take a look at it and we go, okay, this one might be storytelling. So Martin might be the best person for this one. And it's kind of who's excited about it. You know, like, I don't, I don't need to be the director on every single project. You know, it's, sure. I look to these guys and I ask them, what, what do you, what do you guys want to do? What do you want me to do? What do we think is best with our schedules? Um, and you know, dude, I might just be sitting there sweeping the spot. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm <laughs> right. down for whatever. Um, because I want, I want everybody to be stoked. I want, I want those guys are creative. They're good. Um, and I think, you know, surround yourself by good people because it's right. going to make you better. And those guys have definitely made me better. That's awesome, man. That's, that's great to hear. Totally agree. Like, you know, the guy, if you were the guy at the top yelling, then your crew probably wouldn't be stoked. That would probably mm -hmm. reflect in the final piece. Um, your videos just simply wouldn't look as good if, if you were the yeah, guy on set look, yelling. No one wants to work with that guy. No, and we, and we work, I mean, dude, this crew works 24 hours a day and what we got, you got to enjoy it. You know I mean? Most, most jobs um, suck because of the people you work with. You sure. know, so it's like, I want to, I want to work with the best people. I want to work with people I get along with. Um, that's important to me, you know? So. Yeah. Well, so 24 seven job, what are you working on right now on the, these days? I know you just finished the, the mm -hmm. fifth part of the DC series, but what's, what's kind of going on other than that? Uh, there's like, there's, I mean, obviously every season we have new products come out. So yeah. right now we're going through meetings and kind of figuring out what we're going to do for these upcoming shoots that are, you know, coming up in the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and then other than that, like I said, we have a shoot tonight for, for a product coming out that we're going to do uh, cool. uh, with Evan Smith. So we're going to light some stuff on fire. So that should be fun. Cool. And then, um, yeah, and then like, obviously a lot of social media cuts, things like that. Um, it'll be, it'll be good. Cool, man. That's great. Stoked to see that. So I kind of want to move on to another video really quick. This is just a quick minute and a half video that you did with DC recently. This is some of your recent work. Uh, it's just called Go, uh, Go Skateboarding. I'm guessing maybe it came out for Go Skateboarding Day. Correct. Uh, yeah. So I just want to show this off to the audience. And it's, it's just uh, visually, it's, it's beautiful. And, and it's in black and white. And I, and I think there's a good reason for that. And I, I really, really enjoyed this piece. Cool. I think the reason that skateboarding is so special, it's something that's free, but if I didn't have a complete image that most people would see it having, it has a wild style that is glued together by people's relationships. I don't care what you look like, I don't care where you came from, when we put our skateboards down, we're together. First and foremost, if you skate and you're a part of the skateboard family, you look out for other skateboarders. You hold the place for all the next people coming up within it. Every young kid that has the opportunity to escape their family drama can pick up a skateboard and be out in the streets with their friends, enjoying life as they're supposed to. The heart that is inside of them, it has congruency and we have passion together so it doesn't matter a physical form it's like a thread or a fabric at that point it's already woven it's not left to be pieced together it's pieced together and filled with life such a good piece man i think there's there's a there's a big message there um it's much broader than and than just go skateboarding and I love the way that you, you told that story. I mean, with everything going on right now, um, I think that that spoke very loudly. And whether you are a skateboarder or not, you know, that kind of makes, I would, if I was on, let's just say I was on a basketball court, I would rip my jersey off and go grab a skateboard. You know what I mean? And hopefully that was the goal of the video. So I really totally. enjoyed that piece. Thanks. Yeah. You know, the funny part about that, I mean, obviously, like you said, the message right now uh, is perfect timing um, and, and it's all true. But that's yeah. actually something that we had filmed and over a year ago. I mean, the, the initial interview was a year ago. Um, and the concept was a year ago. And that was something that was, there was kind of a side project to where, um, where we had pitched DC of just like, Hey, we want to do this. I'm going to go to Evan's house. I'm going to interview him and just have a natural conversation with him. I just put a mic on him and just said, just tell me why skateboarding's rad. Tell me why it's like a family. And, and then we took those, those audio, uh, sound bites and that's what we came up with. And I had been wanting to project video onto buildings um, in downtown for a project. And we just couldn't get quite the right project for it. And we knew that this was the one. Um, 
so coming coming out of the time it did, uh, it was a great message, a uh, great support with everything going on. Um, the only unfortunate part was there's a little bit more of a marketing plan behind it, which was uh, that with go skateboarding events coming going on that day on June 21st, we were going to project this this video around um, downtown buildings in you know key cities like Philadelphia, Los Angeles, San Francisco. So there's kind of more of a plan that they got shut down because of yeah. COVID. Sure. But, uh, you know, we were one of the only companies to do like a digital activation on Go Skateboarding Day um, with COVID happening and everything. So it was, a, it was a cool, cool process. And our, our team did a good job on that. Yeah, super cool, super effective. So that's all practical. Those are projections. Yeah. That's not in After Effects. Correct. Yeah, we, wow. we went out. Cool. Yeah, we went out and did a lot of testing for or well, we did the first a lot of the shots in there were done uh, at testing time. Mm -hmm. And um and we ended up, they ended up working out great. We, that was something we definitely were trying to figure out, like, are we going to do this in post or are we going to try to do it, you know, in, in real camera and, and it worked. So uh, yeah. we're stoked. I couldn't tell the difference. And I mean, yeah. I, I, I thought it was actually after effects and it's like, kudos to you for spending time tracking that. But I mean, it looked, looked awesome, man. So kind of want to move forward to now. Um, I know you get a lot of stuff sent into you, mm -hmm. uh, cameras, gear, what is currently in your gear bag right now? What are you going to use to shoot tonight's video? So tonight's video, let's see. We're actually, we're going to do one ca main camera is going to be on everything and I'm more directing it, but we've got, uh, we're shooting with a red, uh, cool. a Canon 30 to 105 lens that the Canon sent over. Um, we're using like a, a ton of lights um, and you know, we'll shoot some Super 8. We've been shooting a lot of film stuff to cool. to kind of like really spice up edits. Um, that's pretty much, I mean, it's hard. We we had a shoot yeah. two days ago too. And, and you know, we were we were taking uh, different gear. So every day is so yeah. different. Every yeah, day. probably project dependent a little bit. Exactly. Um, just like, you know, whatever lights, whatever, you know, this lens look better, looks better for this. Mm -hmm. This looks, you know, for a product, uh, close up product shots, it might look different. So I understand that. Um, no, that's great. So now I want to move now I want to backtrack a little bit. I'm kind of jumping everywhere, but you have a couple of gold medals for real street. And, yeah. um, I, I definitely, I want to show a video really quick and then I want to mm -hmm. discuss that. And I, this is just a, I think the last two minutes of that nine minute piece uh, with you and chase. And I got a kick out of it, so I kind of wanted to show it to the audience. Let's watch that real quick, and then we will go in to talk about the, the gold medal. This is the dream team. Chase Webb, Chris Ray. Can't be beat. So congratulations, Chase Webb and Chris Ray. You guys killed it. Let's go give them their medals. When you're putting it together, do you guys feel extra pressure to win just because of last year? I felt more pressure for sure. Winning last year was like, amazing so just wanted to put pressure on myself almost to like try to make that happen again oh, check something. this is the commercial break commercial break sorry <laughs> okay you guys ready it's gonna be a surprise oh come on i can hear him i can hear him come on. Like, the anticipation sucks <laughs> oh Silver, let's sick. go these look pretty sick oh yeah that's Why? what's up Congrats, Thank you. Thanks, nice. Chris. We'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> Dope, Dope, Can I get those back real quick? There's one question I gotta ask kind of before you get this. Do you know who won? I don't know. Yeah, right. I have no idea. <laughs> I do know who won. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Oh my god. Yeah. You guys are cruel. No. You guys are so cruel. I'm, I'm blown away that we won. You know what I mean? To win two years in a row means a lot. Um, to get another one of these uh, means, means a lot to me. It means a lot to this dude. I don't really have words, dude. I'm blown away that that just happened, dude. That was, that was pretty damn cool. Thank you to Chris, X Games. Skateboarding is the best. I'm just glad to be here doing it. I mean, pretty incredible stuff. Like, I mean, not only is it funny, but like it's like Chase obviously deserved that and you did too. And you guys worked really hard, but I just got a kick out of that, man. Like you got yeah. to see kind of your personality come out a little bit. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, last year they surprised us with Muska. We were uh, shooting what we thought was a DC shoot commercial and uh, Muska came out and surprised us. So this year it was like, 
we were wondering like, well, you know, and that was, that was shot during COVID when everything was kind of on lockdown. Uh, so it was a weird time that they got us together and, and, uh, but we knew it had to be filmed for the, for the show. So we're like, all right, let's get together and, and just, just get this thing done and, and get them what they need. And, um, you know, and Mark, Martin's one of my best friends and he knew, uh, two weeks before we shot that. And then they hired him to actually shoot the, to shoot the video. And cool. I had no idea. So I had no, no idea that, that he was, he was in on that, in on it. And, you know, not a huge I fan mean, of surprises, but I'll take it. Yeah. I mean, you're, you, I mean, you were stoked for silver. Um, but you know, the your first question was that Chase asked was who won. And then, so you could tell you were itching for gold, but well-deserved man. Like that part was, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's next level. Those are, I always say those are Thank snowboard you. tricks in a skate video. So it always just blows yeah. my mind, you know, just two seventies and stuff like that. You're just like, what is going on? Right. Um, so uh, how did, you know, how does that concept start? Do you and Chase get together? Is, is, I'm guessing the athlete is asked, Chase is asked, and then does he ask you or are, they, are you guys assigned? Is it a random draw? How's that work? So I've actually, I've done Real Street, I think uh, maybe like eight years now. So okay. they, they've approached, they approached me. Uh, this was last year they approached me and I've got, I got gold with Mike Moe a few years before that also. And then right. I think the year before Chase uh, with Chris Cole, I got second, maybe we got. Yeah. So um, so they hit me up again. They said, hey, do you have any riders that you think you want to do for Real Street? And and I said, yeah, Chase actually reached out to me and wants to do it. And I think he'd be great for it. And and they kind of pushed back a little bit. You know, they were like, oh, we don't know. Like, like we're not, we're not sure. And I was like, trust me, he's, he's, he's going to go for it. You know, like, we're going to have a good part. Like I, I believe in it. Like, I think we should go for it. And so they said yes. And we ended up winning that year. So it was kind of like the underdog story of, of somebody they didn't know if they were going to let in, ended up letting in, ended up winning. And then to come back the second year in a row, you know, not only do you have to beat everybody else, but you have to beat yourself. So there's right. a lot more pressure the second year with that. And, and with Chase, it's like, I just told him, I was like, we have to do a better part, but nothing can be the same. You know, like, yeah. um, that's really the key is that the judges are going to be not only judging this against everybody else's parts, but it's going to be judging it against your part last year. Right. Yeah. So you're, you're thinking as a creative, you're thinking of different camera angles, different lighting mm -hmm. techniques, different spots. He's also thinking of different spots, different tricks to do um, at those mm -hmm. spots. I mean, yeah, it's a crazy concept. Like, it's not standard mm -hmm. filmmaking. It's it's a whole different style of filmmaking that it's truly an art. And Chase crushes it, like, that that part, like, just jaw-dropping. But uh, I want to move on now to this whole thing with Lytra. That's why we're here. Mm -hmm. You use Lytra. You're familiar with Lytra. Let's kind of... Let's kind of go into what's happening this year. So Lytra and GoPro recently teamed up. They made a GoPro branded light. I don't know yeah. if many people know that. It's powered by Lytra. Um, it even has the little Lytra logo underneath it, but it's, it is, it is by GoPro. Um, what has your experience been like with that so far? And do you like it? It's awesome. Actually, the first time I used Lytra was, um, on a trip to Japan and, yeah. uh, GoPro had brought them out and we attached them to the poles and I was filming a bunch of stuff at night. And, you know, I think that was when we had the GoPro hero seven, maybe might've been, uh, when we were in Japan and, you know, those cameras aren't, aren't the best in low light. But when we threw the light on there, I was really surprised with, you know, how much it almost looked like a, a HVX or a VX 1000 at night. I mean, it was, it was great. I was blown away by it. So that's when I first became a fan of it and started using it for my night stuff. And then, uh, yeah. And then GoPro sent me the, the little light. I think I have it right here. They sent me this one and yeah. I, I didn't even know that you guys had made it at first. So I was stoked to hear that because I'd already been using your guys' stuff. So to be, to know that, you know, the two companies I'm stoked on are teaming up to make this, you know, I, I knew it was going to be good. Yeah, man. It's, it's about half the size of a torch, uh, mm -hmm. puts out a lot of power. Um, so it's half the size of our smallest light, mm -hmm. but I didn't get my hands on it until CES this year. So, uh, in January, when I went to CES, uh, I was hanging with Lytra and I went over to check out, out the GoPro booth. I really liked the durability. I thought it was really cool. So I'm glad obviously you're seeing a use for it. And I'm really anxious to see what you do as far as maybe some night stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. I've had this vision, like, you know, since they're magnetized, the torches are, you can, you know, attach them to handrails going up. If you did a bunch of different yeah. colors, there's a lot of cool things that, that you'd be able to do. Um, even, so even, even just taking it and, you know, like tonight, like we'll be sticking them around and, and lighting up our cart and, and our gear so we can make sure we can see everything. I mean, that's, 
that's, it comes in, it's crucial for that. Like you said, with the magnet and just being able to put it on the back of the van and see what we're doing, make sure we don't leave anything behind. Yeah. I can't tell you how many torches I've left like <laughs> somewhere. Um, but what's cool, you're right, because you set that little magnet piece, you stick mm -hmm. it 3M um, to maybe on like one of your Pelicans. Actually, I have them on every one of my Pelican mm -hmm. lids and then I'll stick the light on it and I can turn mm -hmm. the Pelican 180 and use that as a stand for what I'm doing in the other Pelican case. It truly is uh, super helpful and helps you leave stuff or you might leave the light. But um, so let's let's talk about using it in the streets what kind of potential do you see with the lighter torch the studio and the pro for for in the street type of stuff what's what's next with lighter for you well i mean obviously filming skateboarding at night always looks awesome so i mean yeah i don't know a lot of people that don't skateboard don't realize it but i'm actually on a skateboard following you know the skater around around the sidewalk and, and over to the stairs and things like that so um you know we can't obviously i can't hold a big light that i you know with a pole or a c-stand um right. and some some spots you can't light up like that with the generator and stuff in downtown la so uh for me i'm using the light the light a lot on trips i'm using it when i'm in downtown and uh just being able to follow with the skater with the fisheye and and stay with him and basically light him up his board and and get the shots yeah, for sure. I, it's funny that you said it kind of looked like an HVX because I know what you're talking about when we screw mm -hmm. on the big, big old uh, different branded fisheye mm -hmm. lens onto the HVX or the Panasonic DVX 100. And you mm -hmm. get that nice fish, uh, fisheye look, you're really close to them. It's cool to hear mm -hmm. that there's enough light coming to give you that look because I know that at one point I had a flashlight taped on my HVX yeah. uh, maybe I, say, 15 been, years ago. I've been trying to get GoPro. I mean, I I honestly think though that using the the gopro hero max right which the fish is incredible the it's got horizon level fixing and everything like i don't think people in skateboarding even realize how good that camera is and perfect yeah. for skateboarding yeah and then using the light and doing doing like a whole project in new york that's like nighttime only would just look incredible so i've been trying to get gopro to team up with you guys on that like that that would be so much fun to just go out there for a week and make a full night at it I'll be your AC, man. I'll be your assistant let's camera. Do it. Let's, let's go. Let's go light that thing. I uh, I totally agree. I think that could be really cool. Um, it's just nice seeing um, Lytra being pushed in different niches, right? Mm -hmm. So we're in like a cinematic form now with the studio light and we have ambassadors doing that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we everything from photography to video now to skateboarding. Uh, it truly is nice to see that kind of evolve in, into what it is. Um, Chris, what is next for you, man? Like what's what's on your docket for later this year? I know it's been a crazy year. Yeah. um what's what's in the future for you uh you know what it's just i mean you know trying to stay healthy um is obviously a key stay sure. productive you know um the main thing is and the thing i'm really learning a lot lately is just one day at a time you know what i mean like if i look too far ahead i start to get kind of like stressed out and, and overwhelmed and and lately i've been super good about just tackling like what's in front of me today and handling it but making sure that it's working towards my goal uh for the future you know i think that that's key yeah. that's important um and just making sure that i'm i'm happy with what i'm working on you know like if, if yeah. i'm there's a million things i could be filming and why not film the things that make me happy and that i'm excited about and, and stoked on and and uh but i think this whole this whole COVID thing is really you know, I think a lot of people are looking at it maybe in, in somewhat of a negative way because of, of losing jobs and losing work. But um, I'm trying to look at it as like, what are we learning from this? Like, what, are, what is the positive that we're, that we're taking from it? And I think that it, it's, it really showed me like, it doesn't matter how good you are at filming, how hard a worker you are, that like everything can get shut down instantly. And I think that, yeah. that we need to like, think about that as, as creatives, you know, we need to think about that, anything like this could happen in the future and it doesn't matter you know if you work 24 7 and everybody loves your work like you know so it's just it's just kind of thinking like of a, a adapting to it and thinking of an, of a, an, an, another plan i guess yeah for sure yeah i've kind of mm -hmm. you know not to downplay what we do for a living but mm -hmm. i kind of keep telling myself uh in situations just like you were talking about you know they're just videos they're just videos yeah. You know, yep. they're just video. As long as everyone's healthy, everyone stays safe. Everyone's nice to yep. each other. We're just making videos. We just happen I, to really love to do that. I got I got a request to shoot something uh, for this weekend, and and they were <laughs> the client said, well, they they need everything by by Wednesday, and I said, well, you know, I don't you know I don't have the product yet, so um so it was super funny, and I and one of the questions I said was, uh, well, 
if they don't get it by then, are they going to die? And, and they just yeah. laughed and said, I, I don't know. And I said, okay, <laughs> I said, we'll get it done. We'll be good. So, yeah. um, you know, but nobody's going to die. We'll be fine. Exactly. As long as no one, no one passes out on us, I think we're good. I, we, had yeah. a, we had a question come in as you were speaking um, from Switch K, uh, YNG. Um, I still use my mirrorless camera with a gimbal for my skate films. Dynamic range has always been my concern with a GoPro. What's your experience with this? I'm guessing he's talking about the GoPro not having dynamic range just because mm. the lens is so wide, but maybe you can speak on that a little bit. I mean, so it's funny because in, in skateboarding in particular, like I don't, I'm not a fan of like depth of field on it. You know, it's like, it's yeah. capturing the moment, it's capturing the trick and it's making it, uh, maybe it's making the gap look bigger than it really is. So sure. I'm not a huge depth of field person when it comes to filming action sports, unless it's a uh, lifestyle or roll up shots or cut shots. But yeah. uh, my goal is to like have everything in focus because you're usually watching that for the tricks and the reason, you know, of that. So, um, so yeah, the, the whole like no depth of field on a GoPro, uh, to me that's actually i think a positive you know i don't i don't need people going in and out of focus when i'm filming a line so i yeah, think it's a, sure. i think it's a plus yeah I, I would imagine so i mean you want to keep everything nice and crisp um you're whether you're using manual mm -hmm. or autofocus if that skater's coming at you and you know hitting mm -hmm. a big gap all in something and they're huge. never they're never they're never going in the same spot too so that's something right. that you know i think is is important because a lot of kids will reach out and say it's hard for me to keep stuff in focus and i'm like dude shoot at f11 you know what I mean? Like you yeah. don't, you don't need to be at 2.8. It's hard. No. Like they never yeah. go in the same spot. Like it's every try is different. Yeah. Um, I'd rather get the shot and get the trick um, than have them be out of focus. And then turn it to 2.8 and put your, uh, you know, your indie on there for your cinematic B-roll. Right. Yeah. And then that, that way it can look cool. That way it can look cool. And you'll have different yeah. ways. And I think, I think the other thing too, is like when you do that, it, it makes those shots more impactful. It's kind of like when you see a whole HD video, but then you see film sprinkled in, it kind of gives you that yeah. break. And that was, yeah, yeah, it gives you like a separation and it lets your mind go, oh, whoa, something's different here, you know? So I'm a fan of kind of mixing um, like different, different like subjects in a film like that. Yeah, like mixing up the format a little mm -hmm. bit using, because you just said you were going to shoot eight millimeter tonight. So yep. you're clearly already doing that. Um, Absolutely. No, that That's really cool. I think that's what, and, you know, from a snowboarding background, for me, I think that's what snowboard films need. I think that's what skate films need to keep yep. everything uh, new and fresh. Um, NKA Pitts asks, can you offer me a Canon 6D? I don't have those resources, <laughs> and I don't know if Chris does either, so sorry. I man. own one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, once for sale on Craigslist, maybe. Um, yeah. No, that was just, that was kind of funny. So uh, I always like to leave the, the viewer on just a good piece of advice. Um, mm. This has been awesome, by the way, but what is you know, a good piece of advice that you've learned along the way that you hope, you know, someone else doesn't have to go through if, whether they're a skater, whether they're mm -hmm. a filmmaker, a photographer, what's a good piece of advice we could leave these guys on? They, they, if you really want to do this, it's possible. You know what I mean? Like I didn't, yeah. growing up, I didn't have anybody tell me like, oh yeah, like that's what you want to do for a living. Like you could do that. You know, I didn't, I didn't have any, it didn't exist. You know what I mean? Right. So um, just, if you really want to do it, figure it out, put your time in, you know, it's, yeah. Uh, it's not going to, it might be a long time, but it won't feel like a long time. If it's something you're truly passionate about, um, don't give up on it. Take some free jobs so you can um, impress people and, and earn their trust and, you know, meet people. So yeah. Connections. Really connect, con yeah. Connections. Yep. Yeah. Connections are huge. Totally. Yeah, do it. If you love it, CBS skateboarding said, yeah, that's exactly right. Do it. At, yep. If you love it. And, love what you do and, and keep smiling and be the nice guy mm -hmm. on set and not the guy that's yelling. Right. So yeah. No, man. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Chris, thank you so much, man. I, I really appreciate your time. I'm so glad we knocked it out. It's been, uh, yeah. can I, yeah, I mean, it's been one of those things where, uh, you know, the timing was off and our internet mm -hmm. was off and I think that, uh, this was great. And hopefully I see you sooner than NAB next year, man. I'd love if you come yeah. through Salt Lake or something and times are right. Let's, uh, let's, let's do something. Let's work on something. Yeah. That'd be great. Let's do it. Yeah. Awesome, sure. man. Uh, Switch K N Y G S. Can I work for you, Chris, for free? So you might want to hit your <laughs> hit up the DMs. <laughs> I get hit up. I get hit up. All the time, so. Yeah. So Switch K N Y G. Get in line because you're behind me, brother. Um, um, awesome. <laughs> Chris, thanks so much for your time, man. This has been awesome. Uh, keep it up, dude. And I love, I love checking out your stuff. So keep smiling. Keep being awesome, man. Appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.
Cool, man. Thanks, Chris. Right, see you guys. Later. Dude, how rad was that? Chris Ray. I mean, like I said, I've been in contact with him over the last couple of years. We've been liking each other's stuff. I finally got to meet him last year. And over the last couple of weeks, we've had some good contact. He is absolute G. He's so good at what he does. Check out his NFL films. Check out the stuff he's done with GoPro. His Instagram is insane. It's linked there below. I'm sure you guys came from his page to watch this. Uh, his DC shoe stuff, next level. He's obviously been there for 10 years. It's paying off. So guys, that's it. That's all we got today. We finally knocked it out. Third time was a charm. Thank you so much for watching Lightyear's Creative Corner. We will be back next Thursday at the same time, and I hope to see you guys here. Thanks for putting the Inland Valley on the map, Chris. There you go, CBS Skateboarding. He's bringing out the, bringing out the local spots. Awesome, guys. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon. Peace.